Hey and welcome back to Artificial Intelligence for Everyone. On this episode, we're actually going to do some artificial neural network programming in order to predict images from a dataset called Cypher 10. Uh, so let's get coding straight away. Okay, so as I said in the introduction, this is the first video where you and I are actually going to do some programming together. More specifically, we're going to first look at the theory here once again for artificial neural networks and then I'll get coding and actually I've prepared a lot of code for you and we're just going to be talking a bit about that code I've been writing and we're going to not we're not going to go into details about programming here so if you haven't done any programming at all before in your entire life don't be scared just yet because I just want to show you that we actually can produce a program quite easily that does something cool it's more of a thing to uh, keep your spirit up, to make you feel interested about what things you can do using artificial intelligence and quite limited knowledge, because this is something that you could do quite easily soon if you start to use program quite a bit. So I just want to put it out there once again. This is just to show you the cool stuff you can do in an easy way. And don't be scared by the programming. It's just some code and I'll describe it in words instead. So it doesn't really matter. But we're going to go back to artificial neural networks. Um, actually, the, the basic feed forward neural network that we talked about earlier. So if you go to the bottom here, uh, we have the image of uh, what it looks like. We have the inputs, then we have some kind of hidden layer, and then we have the output layer. So if you haven't watched the episode on artificial neural networks and, and the basics of it, the feed forward neural network, uh, I really encourage you to go back and look on the videos because it could be a bit hard to understand for you what's going on here. Uh, if not so, and if you have, if you don't know about supervised learning and haven't watched that video, I really encourage you to do so as well. But it's not necessary to understand what's going on, but I will de definitely recommend you to do so. So in this uh, program we're gonna do here, we're just gonna do a, use a basic artificial neural network to feed forward uh, perceptron or multilayer, and uh, we are not going to use convolutional neural networks, even though we are you doing some kind of image classification. And that is simply because I just want to show you from the start. This is how you did it before with the MLPs. And uh, I just want to show you how good results we achieved there. And then we will just, you know, work on this. And in the end, I will do a convolutional neural network for you as well. So you can see the difference there, how the different implementations go versus each other. But we have the hidden layer here. And uh, we're going to try to see if the size of this hidden layer, uh, the hidden number of neurons here, uh, units in a hidden layer, if our performance increases when we are doing that. And we're going to try to have a, a couple more hidden layers to see if our performance increases and pros and cons with that. So I'm going to do all the coding here. And we're just going to touch, change a few lines here and there. Then we're going to look at the results and see what that looks like. So it will be super interesting for me to show you some actual programming. I'm not, I'm not quite sure how you think this would be, um, since we haven't done any programming before, and I know quite a lot of you haven't, haven't actually done any programming. So please let me know in the comment section down below if you think it's cool to see this kind of examples, what you can do, if it keeps your spirit up, if it makes you interested, or if you just feel very alienated about it. So please let me know about that, because it's uh, hard for me to know what you feel like. But the data set we're going to look at is called Cypher 10. So as I said, it is a data set consisting of 60,032 times 32 images in 10 different classes, which you can see here, like airplane, automobile, bird, bird, bird cat, deer, frog. And I've downloaded these. And uh, initially, we will just look at one of the five data set batches. So we just look at 10,000 Im images. And... Uh, and these are all random, as they say. So we just look at the 10,000 images and try to do some kind of prediction from that. Uh, in a later episode, if you like this kind of programming here in Artificial Intelligence for Everyone, uh, we can try to have uh, more training data because obviously that would be better. And we'll, you know, try that out. But this is what, I, what we're going to do. We're actually going to take 10,000 images that we never seen before. They're only 32 by 32 pixels, so very small. And then we are going to try to predict when looking at an unseen image, uh, if, if what it is, we're going to try to learn to see what kind of objects we have on images. Um, and that's kind of cool, right? If you think about it, that we are actually going to learn to distinguish between 10 different things from an image just by looking at it quite fast. 
Um, so let's go to the uh, code here. So as I said, this is not a programming tutorial. This is just to uh, show you some cool stuff that you can do with all of the theory we have been talking about earlier. So uh, I'm just going to go through it briefly. Um, here we just have some functions that loads our data. And we take this down into two different files, our training data and our testing data. And you never look at the testing data, you only use it after you train everything to see how well you performed on data you've never seen before. So we never touched that. And as you can see, we have 10,000 images here and uh, times 3072. 3, 3, and that's just uh, 32 times 32 times 3 uh, because you have all the images were 32 times 32 pixels and you have RGB layers, so red, green, and blue. So you will have three times the, the size uh, of the image. Um, okay. And then we have 10 different classes. We just specify that quite hard coded here. Uh, yes, uh, we have 10 different classes. And uh, we just say here that the, all these numbers are decimal numbers um, for the images. Because we did something up here is called we divided all the images by 255 and that's just because RGB uh, images when they are represented like these go from values of 0 to 255 but it, we don't need to have them that big so we can just divide them by 255 and we have them in a range of 0 to 1 instead because it's, it's easier to train like that. And now we're going to come here. Oh, I'm going to clear this out. We don't, we don't want you to see what's happening initially. Um, so we just define here, we're using a, a framework called Keras for training our uh, neural network here. So we can see that we define our sequential model. We just define a model uh, that, that we then can add layers on. So it's just a basic uh, neural network model. What we do then is that we add a, uh, a layer here. And this is one of the layers that we looked at earlier. So what you see here is me adding a layer with 50 hidden units and that has the input shape of, and this is just dimension, 3072. So we say that you, you should have 50 hidden units and you will get these many data points as input data, you know? So 3072. So just going back at, oh, I don't want to highlight that. Um, just going back to the image that we looked at here in the very bottom. So just to freshen your memory up, uh, this is these are the hidden units, and now we specify that we want to have fifty of these, and we want to have three three thousand seventy two of these. Okay, and so that's cool. Um, we don't want to have that, and uh, comment that out. So, and then this is not this is commented out right now, so we're not running this. And uh, then we uh, take this down. In the end, we had another another layer. Dense means fully connected, and here we have. 10 units uh, in the very output layer of our neural network, this one. And we have 10 of these because we were looking at the C410 dataset, right? So we will have 10 different classes. So each output node would represent uh, one class. So for example, let's say that the first node in the output layer uh, corresponds to airplane. Uh, when, the, um, when our network thinks it's an airplane, that value would be the highest from the first output. So we have this and uh, then we have some activation function, which we're not going to talk about. It just gives you probabilities. And then we have some kind of optimizer here, but we don't have to worry about that either. What we want to check here is how well our network performs now. So just giving you some perspective, we have 10,000 images, random images from these 10, diff 10 different uh, labels, right? The airplanes, the cats and whatever. And we have 50 hidden uh, nodes which is not a lot at all. And then we have our output layer. So we have one hidden layer looking at 10,000 images. And now uh, we're going to train on those. And then we're going to check on our data set, if, on our test data set, if we perform very well. So let's just run this for, um, first we're going to start with 10 rounds. So 10 epochs is just 10 rounds of training. So let's see what that looks like. So as we can see here, we have our accuracy, and this is the accuracy on our training data. And you can see it goes from 13% in the start all the way up to 25%. So 
just doing this very small training, we can have 25% accuracy looking, you know, on predicting what it is on the image. And that's really cool, I think. But this went very fast and we didn't have much uh, training uh, epochs here. So we're going to increase this maybe to 40. So we're going to run this training 40 times instead and see if it learns more. And as we can see, it's just learning a lot here and it's coming all the way up to boom, boom, boom. Come on, 37% already. So now we're having 37% accurate, 38 if you round it. Accuracy on our training data set. Uh, and that's really cool. And when we test our model on the uh, test data set, we're achieving 34% uh, accuracy on just having one hidden layer with 50 nodes. And that's kind of cool if you think about it. So now when we look at 10,000 images, we're going to be correct uh, on 34% of these, if they are of these uh, different 10 different objects we we're looking at, what are what it is uh, on the image or not. Uh, really cool if you think about it. And we barely done any coding at all. Uh, so it's really fascinating. What we're going to do now is that we are going to increase from 50 layers to uh, um, maybe, what do you think, 200 layers. We're going to run training for that long. Uh, so let's put 200 hidden nodes here in our in our network and we're going to run this for 20 epochs and see if uh, we perform better when our hidden network is larger. And <laughs> I really can't remember what it was before. So let's, we can see here with 200 uh, hidden units, we have 26%. And let's try it with 50 again, just to see what it was because I can't remember. And here we have 31. So that's, uh, that's really weird, but let's try to add another hidden layer here. Modif so we're going to add another hidden layer. And what we're going to do here is we're going to have a uh, we're going to have 50 hidden layers, 50 nodes in the first hidden layer and 200 nodes in the second hidden layer. Don't worry about these activation functions. I might talk about them in a later episode, but they're not for now. So don't don't worry about them. So we can see now that we are really learning a, a lot more. We're having only during 20 epochs, we have 40% accuracy on our training data and 38 on our test data, which is really cool. Let's try to run this for a few more epochs. So now when it's training, I'm going to discuss a bit. So basically when we're adding more hidden layers, we are able to, le to learn more about our data, like non-linear attributes of our data, which helps us, you know, distinguish stuff in when it puts it into a higher dimension. Um, so it's very natural that we have, are seeing an increased performance. Same thing here. We are having better accuracy in our test data, but we are not doing better on our training data, but we're not doing better on our test data. Um, and it seems like it could be because we have some kind of overfitting. I really can't remember if I have talked about overfitting before. So I'm going to mention it briefly now. So sit down. We're going to have some <laughs> too fast minutes of knowledge here. But uh, so overfitting is when your, your model is so complex that it just learns your training data very well. It just mirrors the training data instead of learning to generalize on unseen data. So I'm gonna trying to find a real word example here. Uh, but basically, let's say that <laughs> this is gonna be a weird example, but you raise a child and every time you don't allow them to see any cars at all. They're not allowed to see any cars in their entire life. I don't know how that works, but take it for now. But then after a while, you only show them, show them images of yellow cars and only yellow cars. Okay, cool. They do that for their entire life. And, you know, these guys, they'll think that, well, all cars are yellow. And then when you they see a red car, they have absolutely no clue what that is. Basically the same thing here. We're just training on... Uh, on our uh, training data a lot and our brain <laughs> fuck that was not a good example but the child's brain is very wired to think that all cars are yellow same thing here our model is very wired to think that you know our data looks like this it doesn't look like that 
I'm gonna I'm gonna prepare the real world examples for next time, so they're not as fuzzy. Uh, but we can still see here our accuracy is going up a bit um, on on training, not on tests. It seems to not do very well here, and uh, we we can add some kind of regularization there, which kind of limits our overfitting. But I'm probably gonna mention that in another later episode, so don't worry about that. But there are ways to solve this overfitting. But once again, um. If you think about this, this is super fascinating stuff. I mean, we basically just did programming for 15 minutes here with me talking heaps, and we were able to train a very simple network uh, that aren't used that much uh, anymore for image recognition, but it has 38% accuracy on predicting on 10 different uh, types of objects in, in you know thousands of images what it actually is on that object. And I find that so fascinating. So think about that for a second, and while you do, please do reflect upon If you think it's nice with this kind of episode where I show you what you actually can do with uh, machine learning and AI, um, it would be really nice for me to know if I'm putting this on a level that is good knowledge-wise, uh, so I'm not going all the way over here trying to make really cool stuff when you're like, whoa, I feel very alienated about this, what is code? Um, and I don't want that. I want you to learn as much of it as possible. Uh, so please, if you ever give me feedback, I know you're out there, guys, watching these videos. This is the time to give feedback because it is deep waters for me in this kind of non-programming episodes. Um, so yeah, please do. And uh, yeah, guys, if you like this kind of videos and if you want to learn more about AI and machine learning and artificial intelligence, please uh, subscribe to this channel. Uh, not please do so because for your own sake so don't miss out on videos and um yeah you know from the last video yesterday that i am moving to thailand tomorrow and i'm super keen and i'm bringing all of my equipment with me so we will be able to talk uh, you and i from there as well so hopefully my microphone will work there as well so you don't get the shitty sound and uh well guys i'll talk from you <laughs> to you from thailand instead so as always guys most important thing uh, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day and I'll talk to you soon again.